I've been planning this trip for over two years and I can't believe it's finally happening. I'm about to travel to Afghanistan on my own. Yes, the same Afghanistan that you always hear about in the news. The devastation is everywhere. Eight people have been killed. Female journalist was shot dead. Eight kilometers away from Kandahar city. The political history in Afghanistan is extremely complex and very, very volatile. And it's way beyond the scope of this travel vlog. But let me give you a couple of quick historic facts that could help you with the understanding of what's actually going on here in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been in a state of war to varying degrees over the last few decades. And a big pivotal event in this history is the 1979 Soviet invasion, which gave rise to a lot of instability all across the country. And then, of course, an event that you might all remember, the 2001 American invasion of Afghanistan. Now, the most important key player in the politics of Afghanistan today is the Taliban, a terrorist organization responsible for countless bloody attacks all across the country. The Taliban's goal is to take control over Afghanistan and implement a very extreme, very strict version of the Islamic Sharia law. So given this volatility and all the conflict, why would anybody want to travel to Afghanistan? Well, I hope that this series shows you that there is a different side to Afghanistan, the one that you don't really see in the news, one that is inspiring and beautiful, where Afghan people are fighting to build a very different kind of future for their country. But before traveling to Afghanistan, I had to spend some time preparing for my trip. All right, I've just come out here with Nina, my friend who's from Syria. Hello. So what are we doing right now? Oh, we're buying the Abaya. Oh. <laughs> it's basically a safety um, outfit, so I need to be wearing an abaya throughout most of my time in Afghanistan sure. and also yeah. ideally a hijab, which is a head covering. We will teach you how to do the hijab. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 days of self-quarantining in Istanbul and two Covid tests, okay, I was finally ready to go. <laughs> this is where the journey finally begins. I'm just in the taxi on my way to Istanbul airport. Here we are. This is the airport and I'm about to say goodbye to Istanbul and to Turkey. Oh my god, I'm so excited! I feel like my anxiety levels <laughs> and excitement levels are going up to a degree I haven't experienced in a really, really long time. <sighs> or if it's just the fact that I'm going to Afghanistan, where I've been wanting to go to for years. Almost there. Almost boarding. the airport in Kabul and I'm about to go through immigration and this is probably a good point to blend in a little bit more. I'm finally through immigration, my passport has been stamped, I'm officially here. Mahdi. Hello. All right, they'll be helping me and taking me around not just Kabul but Afghanistan in general. So, Gul, what's the safety situation for tourists coming to Afghanistan? As for tourists, uh, the safety is not so bad. So because the tourist is always moving, mm. and so it's not staying in one place. Uh, a diplomat or a person who is working in Afghanistan for he cannot come to uh, to to this place as we as a tourist mm. do because he's not allowed. Mm. Because when he people know him very well, when he come out, he has to be careful. 
-hmm. But tourists, no. Tourists is low profile. We gave them the local clothes, go in low, low profile cars. Mm -hmm. That's not so bad for tourists. <laughs> so, yeah, but Taliban, uh, as everywhere at the countryside, on the big uh, roads, if we travel to other provinces, there is big risk mm -hmm. and there could be Taliban checkpoint. Mm -hmm. So that's why we use most of the destination flight, mm -hmm. uh, not by road. Compared to tourists, what, how would you say is the safety situation for normal people living in Afghanistan? Yeah, normal people uh, also have uh, concern when we are like traveling to, to another province, we are not using our uh, uh, Android phones with, with us, we don't carry or and uh, so we have, we don't use, we don't take our documents with us, that if we have official documents that show that we are working for government, for uh, international organizations, so we are very careful, so we, we wear local clothes, we don't go with the jeans and this, so Still, it's, it's a challenge for Afghans, but Afghans knows how to. All right, here we are. Look at that gate. <laughs> There's no sign. <gasps> no I, sign. Uh, that this is uh, only they receive guests uh, through emails, through wow. advance booking. Is that for safety reasons? Yeah, so this is why we are here. <laughs> Wow, look at that, two gates. I think this is the first time that I've seen security this tight in a guest house. Well, welcome to my crib. This is my room, <laughs> but I'm not staying here very long. Actually, I just need to quickly get changed into an abaya, which is a long black cloak, to blend in even a little bit more. I mean, Kabul is, not the safest of cities in the world. In fact, it suffers from regular terrorist attacks, usually by the Taliban. And so, you know, even though tourists aren't usually targeted, it's always good to just err on the side of caution. All right, and here is the headscarf which is the finishing touch. All right, and this is the final look. Done, let's go. Today, Gul and I are planning to just walk around Kabul and get to know its streets and its markets a little bit better. And I am super, super curious what it's gonna be like because I have so many expectations because I've been meaning to come here for such a long time and I'm just curious to see if those expectations will match up to what Kabul is really like. found ourselves in a music shop where these guys make instruments by hand. One and a half months just to make one instrument. just entered a kite shop. You may associate Afghanistan with um, kites a little bit if you've come across the novel The Kite Runner by um, Khaled Hosseini, probably one of the most famous books about Afghanistan. It's my hobby. I love every uh, village, every street of Kabul. Children love kiting mm -hmm. and waiting for the season. Mm -hmm. So, love. That is a kite with two messies on it. Hmm? 
since we we're in a kite shop in Kabul, who offered to teach me how to fly a kite in his house. So we're going to choose a couple of kites here, and then later on today, we're going to fly them. <laughs> Uh huh. Put here. Okay. Here. So you can control it. Control it, yeah. <laughs> it's ready. Yeah, it's ready. Perfect. So this is a bone fixing doctor, apparently. I don't know if I need any bones fixed, but I'm gonna go inside and check it out. This is you? Oh. Really? Oh, wow, look at you. Amazing. Gul, tell me, what did they do here? What, what happens in this little shop? So the, this shop, it's a bone fixer. If someone's hand, leg, or any bone problem, so they come here, traditionally different sets. Wow, and why would someone come here and not go to the hospital? So this is uh, from a uh, long time ago, from so people mm -hmm. used to. Uh -huh. and also, they are very expert on this. Okay. People believe on them. Uh -huh. So if I had a broken bone, could this gentleman fix it? Yes. In case you guys ever need a bone fix, just come out here to Kabul. <laughs> You know what, I've read about this bird market in so many books about Kabul and about Afghanistan that it feels completely cool. surreal to actually be here for real and see it with my own eyes and it's exactly, exactly how I picture it. Walking through the bird market honestly is an experience unto itself. There's birds absolutely everywhere. You hear them, you see them, you smell them. Never been to a place like this. It's insanity. Probably the oldest cafe in Kabul, 70 years old. So, why you don't need a spoon? When you pour, so you have to. Ah, that's why. This is my first cup of proper Afghan tea here in Kabul. Cheers. <laughs> oh, it's so delicious. Super fresh, sweet, amazing. This here is a local bakery with a beautiful tandoor right there. This is like an actual little factory line. So there's a boy here who kneads the dough uh, into little balls. There's another guy there who rolls it in some flour and then passes it on to this guy who molds it into a beautiful little piece of bread and passes it on to that, that guy who then does something else. I don't know what, exactly what he does. And then he, that guy passes it to that guy who then puts it in the tandoor and then the last guy passes it on to the guy sells the bread on street level. Amazing. It's a whole system. It's beautiful. Simple, efficient, fresh bread. <laughs> I'm Ava. I'm Zahra. I'm Sharmila. <laughs> And what? we are the princesses of Kabul. <laughs> okay, honestly, I don't know how this happened, but here we are, dressed up in these beautiful clothes, all of us, <laughs> doing a little photo shoot at the Queen's Palace, just because. <laughs> Welcome to Kabul. <laughs>
So tell me about this area. Okay, so I live in this spot around there. So I remember uh, 20 years back when I we were coming to this uh, hill and this this part was all green agriculture trees but after uh, the Taliban gone so this place now become houses there's all built it in uh, 20 15 years and now there's no land left no agriculture you don't recognize it no no i i remember the green how green it was mm. but not anymore It's been a really, really long day of walking and exploring the city, but we have just arrived here in front of Ghoul's house where we're gonna try and fly some kites and have dinner. Let's go. In this bar, after ages, maybe. Do you still remember it? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try. Is it ready? Mm. All right. <laughs> Rules of this game. What's going on? Oh, so now we have to find a I want to fight. I have just learned that the purpose of flying a kite is to make it a battle with another kite. So you have to find another kite somewhere up at the sky and to fly into it and fight with it for the domination of the sky. He's an expert and it looks very, very hard. So I don't know if I'm going to be trying out this whole thing. It's like a hundred meters away. How far can it go? As long as. Oh, there's a tree in the way. We love it. We have one more kite only, so we gotta make this one count. Ooh. Here we go again. Oh no! No! <laughs> Check that out, there's an actual battle happening in the sky right now. I don't know who's winning, no idea what's going on, but something's happening. <laughs> oh no! Oh, there it is. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our traditional food called Ashak inside is the leek. I told Gul that I was vegetarian and I didn't expect that his wonderful family, the ladies in his family would cook an all vegetarian feast. But it's all vegetarian, so I can eat everything. It's amazing. <gasps> Oh my god, what a day it's been and I can't believe, I still cannot believe I'm here in Kabul, Afghanistan. One of like my top travel dreams finally coming true. It's not like what I imagined it would be. It's much more lively and colorful and vivid and I felt more relaxed than I thought I would and definitely very welcomed. I mean, everybody who got to know the fact that I am a tourist was extremely hospitable and welcoming. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that I had an amazing guide who knows everything about the city, Ghoul. I mean, I really owe this trip to him. And um, I know it's not the same if you live here or if you're Afghan yourself, but as a tourist, which is the only role that I can speak of, so far it's just been heartwarming and so much more incredible and rewarding than I expected. I'm ecstatic to be here. And this is only the beginning of my Afghanistan stories. There's so much more to come and I cannot wait 
to share this beautiful country with you from my traveler's perspective. All right? See, I, I knew it. I've been telling you all along. I've been telling you all along. The world belongs to the brave. <laughs> all right, I hope you enjoyed this tour of Kabul. Keep exploring, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah!